Hello, this is Christy Patton Lopes, and this is a recording for ChemEng 4096. In this lesson, we'll be looking at Chapter 5, which is Tracing Chemicals Through the Process Flow Diagram. Our goals here are that we will learn about how the reactants, products, and inerts flow through continuous processes and tracing them so that we can make sure that we see where they enter, where they leave, or where they're formed or consumed by reaction. Basically, in a general diagram for a PFD or even PNIDs, we try to start with the reactants, the feed materials on the left side of the process flow diagram, and then we trace these forwards across the page and then products ideally come out the right side of the PFD diagram. If you're looking for where the reactants are, generally we start with the feed and go towards the reactor. And normally on products, we are going to start at the outlet where the products are removed from the system and trace backwards towards the reactor. That's kind of a general best practice to see where they are. For anything other than the reactor, what we're going to do is look at every single unit operation, whether it's a distillation tower, a pump, whatever. That If it has a single output stream, we'll trace through those in the forward direction. And if anything is present in the input, it has to appear somewhere in the output also. If it has a single input stream, then we might want to trace that backwards, okay? because anything that's present in the output will be present in the input. Right? These are just logical. Reactors are the place where we have to be tricky because things are be being transformed there. So this is the benzene uh, and toluene system. Okay, in this case, we're doing turning toluene into benzene by hydrodealkylation. And so we start with our feed of toluene and bring it in. It passes through vessel V101, a pump, and then it's going to come here where it is going to be mixed, go into a heater, and on into the furnace a fired heater, and then into our reactor. The benzene is produced and comes out as stream 15. And if we trace this back, it came from this distillation tower. The feed for that came from a heater through this vessel 103 and vessel 102, this heater, and then back into the reactor. So those are the primary paths for our toluene feed and our benzene product. <laughs> we can also do this for methane and hydrogen. Hydrogen comes through these mixers, heat exchanger, the fired heater, into the reactor. The fuel gas or methane, okay, that's the primary component in the fuel gas, is going to come out here it is going to come from the flash drums, vessel 102 and 103, from the heater and the reactor. So again, we're tracing our products from the end result back towards the reactor, and we're tracing our products, or excuse me, our feed from the front end towards the reactor. It is not to say that there's not methane or hydrogen present in other streams. It's just these are the primary streams, the primary path. Now, once you start looking at recycle and bypass, it gets a little bit more complex. If the stream's in a loop flow so that the flow path forms a circuit back to the point of origin, it's a recycle. And if the stream's in a loop flow so that the material uh, doesn't form a complete circuit back, then it's a bypass. And here are examples here of a toluene recycle. So remember our primary toluene path was through here, but at the end we are 
in our reactor we are still going to have some toluene remaining and it's going to be separated out in this distillation tower. We're going to take that and we are going to recycle it back so that it forms a closed loop with the original primary path for the toluene. There are some other recycle loops in this process and those are shown in this diagram. You might pause and take a moment to look at those. And again, take another pause and look at these. Notice that distillation towers inherently have small recycle loops in there. For inerts, we can trace those either forward or backward, it, whatever seems to make most sense to you. Inerts should trace through the process, coming in with the feed and go all the way through exiting the system. So this is a system that you can practice with on the ethylene oxide. So we have, well let's look at the ethylene since it's more critical, and look at the primary path. So it comes in here, goes through a valve. This is coming in, not leaving. We're going to come down here. It next goes through a heater. It's mixed with some air, but we're tracing the ethylene. So it's going to go through the heater into reactor 702, but it's incomplete reaction, so we're going to then take it through another heater, a compressor, a small tower here, and we're going to take the rest of it into through that another heater valve and into a secondary reactor. You can find material streams so that you can get a better sense of what these do. You can also try taking a moment and pausing and looking at, say, ethylene oxide or the fuel gas, the methane, in this process. One last little quick topic we want to discuss is written process descriptions. When you are doing a design for somebody, you need to ultimately write up what the design process is in words. So you will be writing the process description. You have a lot of experience at reading process descriptions as you've done homework throughout your curriculum. Now then, you're going to flip that and you're going to be the one that it makes sense of the diagram and puts it into words. You should use the logic of tracing chemicals in this chapter as a guide for how to best describe the process. Follow the major components from feed to reactor and then from there follow the product through to the end on the major pathways. Then come back and discuss any recycle or bypass that you have in the system. There's a great example in the book on the toluene uh, hydrodealkylation process. And you also then can um, just pick up a textbook and read all of those process descriptions that we've been giving you as homework. So that completes this little lesson, and I thank you for your time.